Hey guys, I figured I'd give you an update on the touch solutions or methods I'm, I'm working with here for the Explorer. Um, as you may have seen in the other video, I made posted like a little test uh, video of the touch CRT. So basically, I uh, got one of these panels here said for a 9.7 inch screen and it fits right over top. Um, you know, sandwiches in between the uh, TV bezel and the bezel that they made for the movie. And it looks pretty nice and you can't even really tell. Um, this is all cloudy because it's got protective film on it, but um, yeah, it's pretty nice. You can't even really tell that it's there since it's like sandwiched like that. Um, even though it's larger, you know, after you calibrate it, it, uh, you know, it sorts everything out. So uh, yeah, it actually works pretty well. Uh, however, I do want to make some sort of an LCD solution. You know, if I can just swap it in, swap it out, because uh, these CRTs are more prone to failure. I already have two of them that are dead, um, which, I mean, they can be fixed, they can be recapped, and they can, you know, you can repair them. But uh, it would be nice to have something like this um, that's reliable. It's probably going to last forever, especially if I upgrade the light to uh, LED lighting. Uh, and it's also daylight readable too, which is nice. You know, these CRTs aren't really meant to be outside. Um, at least, you know, not without a hood or a shade or something on them. So, you know, in direct light, you know, it's really, really washed out. Uh, if you notice in the movie, most of the shots that the explorers are in is pretty overcast. So no like real direct harsh light. And so it really worked out, uh, you know, for, for filming, but, um, yeah, so I want to have an LCD option. You know, this would be great if it's, you know, indoor show or something at night or something. It's, it's perfect, but, uh, you know, here in Florida, it's it's very sunny. So, uh, yeah, this is what I went with. And it is a kind of a cobbled together LCD, uh, you know, in touch thing that, that I've been working on. Uh, I have a really old video on my YouTube where I had a, like a rugged tablet. It's like a really chunky outdoor like kind of like a military or you know I don't know whatever gate uh you know industrial kind of tablet and it has a daylight readable LCD it ha which has like a anti-glare coating on it and it's polarized um so I basically took that apart and since I took it out of its you know it's not in the, t the uh, tablet anymore the computer you know, all that stuff is integrated, the controller and all that for the LCD and the touch. It's all integrated into the, it's basically like a laptop almost. So I had to buy uh, controllers, basically. I had to buy this controller right here. This is a somewhat universal um, LCD controller. Uh, however, this is a pretty popular uh, screen, I guess, uh, to mod or to um, upgrade. Because, uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, they have uh, LED upgrade kits. So this is a super bright I mean, it's already pretty bright now. It's meant to be daylight readable, so it's meant to be super bright. But they actually sell upgrade kits, so you can upgrade to LED in different varying, uh, you know, intensities. You can get really, really uh, bright LED, uh, like a retrofit kit. Uh, but they also sell controllers. Uh, this was only like 20 something bucks on eBay, and it came with all the right cables. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was, I was happy to see when I took this tablet apart that I can actually get, um, you know, parts to make it work outside of the tablet, basically. And uh, it's just a standard four-wire touch. And this is the controller for the touch. And this one right here that I use for the uh, CRT uses the same controller. So no special drivers if I'm, you know, switching back and forth, no, no software changes, anything like that. It should just, uh, I should be able to just drop you know, whichever one in and, and go. I might have to recalibrate the screen. I don't have, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, I'm just, well, I don't know if it remembers the ID and maybe it automatically will switch. I don't know, but we'll, we'll figure that out. But uh, yeah, so this is it. And it, like I said, it fits, you know, it's the, it was the right size. Um, it's an 8.4 inch LCD. So these monitors, these old CRTs are nine inch, uh, but that's, like the entire tube size, basically. They measure CRTs differently than LCDs. LCDs, it's like the true, uh, you know, true measurement, but CRTs is kind of uh, like matted here, like kind of cropped. Uh, 
But um, yeah, so it's it's within, you know, it's very, very close. It's a tiny, tiny bit smaller. Um, but this, I mean, as far as LCD sizes go, there's like 8.4 uh, and like goes up to like 9.7, something like that. So uh, yeah, this I think is pretty much meant to be a, like a CRT replacement for a nine inch. And uh, yeah, this is it. And uh, yeah, this is the touch overlay here. And this is the the glass. It's It has an anti-glare uh, coating on it. It's uh, polarized as well. So you can see the screen just looks completely white unless you put the touch uh, panel over it, which I thought was kind of cool. And um, that's really gonna help uh, the daylight readability if it's polarized. So um, yeah, I was happy to see that. Uh, and like I said, there's seems to be a lot of uh, upgrades for this for this particular panel, which I thought was pretty cool. And that little tablet thing that I took apart, I mean, I think I got it for like 30 or 40 bucks, like a while back. Um, you know, that stuff like that goes obsolete pretty quick, but I didn't want the computer or anything. I just wanted the screen from it. So, um, yeah, so I'm really happy with it. Uh, I'm going to go to the garage here in a second and I will show you the, um, the CRT touch that I got going on there. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, like I said, it'd just be nice to have something that's, you know, definitely more reliable, like with an LED upgrade, to get rid of this inverter here, an LED upgrade uh, would be, um, would, would be really nice. It would uh, just be reliable and at least have it as a backup or something like that. But uh, yeah, let me go to the garage and I'll show you uh, what I've been working on with the CRT. Oh, one more thing I wanted to add about the LCD. Uh, I actually bought this um, little module here that goes in line with the VGA cable. It's called the scan line generator. Basically, it kind of it's supposed to mimic the look of a CRT. Uh, CRTs have these like kind of like scan lines. If you get close, you can see them. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. Uh, I, man, I, I like the way the LCD looks. I know it's not completely accurate, but uh, yeah, you can. The settings here, you can change the size of the lines and stuff. So if I click it on, you can see there's. It's off. That's on. So it makes it kind of look like a CRT. Kind of gives it that feel. These are really common with like arcade uh, you know, machines. People that do like um, that retrofit uh, LCDs into you know old arcade machines, and they want that look. Uh, it's okay. I mean, I'll probably leave it hooked up, and you can turn it on and off. Um, but I figured I'd I would show you that. And um, yeah, let me just oops. Um, but yeah, and that weirdness too, when I'm touching it, that distortion there, that's just because it's, it's resting on a, uh, on a box here to, to lift it up for testing. But when it's glued in or something, it won't have that distortion. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that, that, uh, there is kind of an option to get it to sort of look like a CRT. I mean, you can still tell it, tell it's an LCD, but it makes it a little bit closer, I guess. All right, so here's the touch setup that's currently in the Explorer with the CRT. You know, I didn't think that the uh, touch screen would add that much, you know, to, to the to the truck, but yeah, it really does. And it is, it is cool. You know, people come in and they can, you know, touch things and stuff like that. It makes it more interactive for sure. And it makes it, uh, yeah, a lot more real, I, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, granted I could do most everything with this keyboard, but, uh, you know, making it touchscreen really just added a lot more um, potential, basically. Like this little screen I made, where you can hit it to to make changes to the to the program before it starts up. Um, yeah, I've added different things where I can uh, change the length of the tour. I can make it faster, slower, um, exclude certain scenes and stuff like that. Uh, kind of really just customize it to you know however you want. Um, obviously, this. Uh, I think I've posted some videos of this admin screen, but yeah, I can tell basically to go directly to the tour or go to the admin screen. So I have my speed and all that stuff like that displayed there. So if I hit the admin button, it'll go right to this. And uh, yeah, there it is. There's the GPS speed. That was something that I added recently. And the antenna is actually 
right under here. It, it fit kind of in between the A pillar uh, right there. So it gets pretty good signal. Even even in the garage, it's, uh, it's it's got pretty good signal. It looks like it's not jumping all over the place, but but yeah, the, I mean the touchscreen. Headlights on. Headlights on. Just to have Headlights on. Headlights off. this kind of interaction, you know, where Doors where you're touching it versus the versus the keyboard, uh, I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah, and eventually I'll have these where they work. I think I mentioned that in the other video. I'll eventually have it where. You know, if the gas is low, if the engine's overheating, something like that, it'll, uh, well, I can kind of mimic it here. Let me see. Um, I think I have it as like the question mark. Maybe, oh, this thing died. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, is it the question mark? Let me see. Mm -hmm. It's up here. <clears throat> yeah, so I have that where it'll pop up. Um, yeah, I haven't wired any of this up yet, but uh, but that will be wired through the iPack, so I, I can actually see if the check engine light's on uh, without using the the, the the full gauge cluster, which would be nice. But yeah, basically what I wanted to show is, yeah, because I did that touch uh, addition, I mean, it makes so many more uh, things possible. So now if I want to get to the admin menu, I can do a, a long press on this. I can you know, do stuff like that. You know, these are all the scenes here. Let's see if I can get it to to focus. But uh, yeah, so I can jump scenes here. I can do um, I can skip scenes. You know, if I don't want something to play, I can skip dinosaurs, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, tour length short. This is basically the short tour doesn't have the uh, the T Rex attack and all that stuff like that. Map only. It'll basically just keep looping the map scene. Um, you know, depending on the show or whatever I'm doing, like, you know, I might not want you know, the T-Rex attack thing because no one's going to, if no one's inside the vehicle, you're not even going to hear that. So oh, that's one bad thing about the CRT too, is it's, it's hard to film, but, uh, yeah. So I basically just want to make everything as, as customizable as possible and having the, um, the touch really, really, uh, you know, made that possible basically. And I did add my holes. I mentioned that in another video. So rather than stopping the tour right at a certain spot, you hit hold, it'll kind of go to the next thing, the next good place to stop, and it'll stop. Um, yeah, what else did I add? I added a soundboard. Dodson, Dodson, we've got Dodson here! See, stuff like this, I mean, I do have a lot of these sounds on, um, I do have a lot of these sounds, you know, with the, uh, with the keyboard, but just having the, the touch just makes it a little more it's much easier to, to do, but yeah, I can do music. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I can do the outside sounds. I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, I made it to, I can raise the volume there. Oops, not that one. Um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to like look through the phone here to do this. But yeah, so stuff like this, I mean, just make makes it, uh, you know, much more interactive, much more, uh, you know, ap appealing. So, um, but yeah, uh, another thing I added too was this video player kind of skinned, kind of themed to the like projector, uh, in the control room. I made this animation like a long time ago. Uh, so I can kind of recycle the assets from that to kind of make a, make a video player. But basically, uh, yeah, I can do, uh, I only have a, you know, Jurassic Park and uh, the making of and stuff like that, but, uh, but I'm going to do some other things in there, some other little clips, maybe like a, uh, like a little super cut of all the different Explorer scenes, you know, kind of showing people, you know, what the truck was like in the movie, if they don't remember, um, I might even do maybe like, you know, some like making of the, the truck or something like that, like just how it was made, um, some of the shows I go to, like Maker Fair and stuff, you know, people are actually interested in how, how the truck was made. So, um, but yeah, adding the touch just really made a lot of that possible. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's only so much I can do with the keyboard, but, uh, but yeah, you can see it's, I mean, you can, you can't really tell it's there because it is, you know, sandwiched in between. Um, right now this bezel is just like taped on here, which, uh, you know, it's, it's a temporary thing, just, um, you know, because I've been you know, testing this thing, but 
Um, I want to do maybe magnets or Velcro or something, because if I want to make the uh, screen, you know, swappable, it needs to be something that can, uh, you know, I can easily put back. I, I'm, you know, pretty certain, uh, pretty certain from the movie, they just uh, glued it or something, but uh, that's not going to work for me. So, um, yeah, and the, and the, I mentioned the GPS thing. I put everything in this nice little enclosure. Uh, you can see that little flashing light there. That's the GPS signal. Um, yeah, this is nice. This is a uh, like an Arduino enclosure, and it has a uh, it's like a shield. It just kind of stacks on top of the Arduino, and it has this nice case. And I, I soldered everything. I don't know if you saw my other videos, but everything was just kind of kind of strung out everywhere and just kind of jumped together. This is an actual like. Um, you know, box now, you know, and much cleaner, much safer, no, nothing's kind of exposed. You know, the relay board is still exposed there, but um, that's more like hardwired into the truck. So, um, yeah, well, I think that's about it. Yeah, I was I was a little hesitant to even bother with the touch, but uh, but now that it's done, uh, I'm really happy with it. And um, yeah, just, you know, little fun things for people to do, you know, if you put the wrong code in. You know, stuff like that. I think people will get a kick out of it. All right. Well, thanks for watching.